It's time. Pre-order should be open as of the 30th of March. Check your retailers and the Extrify website for details. This video will be focused on the shape which I made out of clay, but I'll go over all the other things we decided and why too. So special thanks to Extrify who have done amazing work on the rest. They made it lightweight, and it's the first mouse to feature their new extra flexible and soft cable. It's using a 3389 top optical sensor, which also has a low liftoff distance. And we figured the top button could have multiple uses, so we added a switch on the base to change what it does. That also means there is no software. You can set it to change the lighting, the polling rate, the liftoff distance, and once you have all that the way you want, you can then switch it to F11, which you can then bind in game to something. We figured F11 isn't used too often, so it should be okay for most. I chose to work with Extrify for the quality and their ambition to make top mice. I figured they had everything right, they just needed the right shape to contend with the other top mice. And here we are, we have a contender. While designing it, I used as many top design principles as I could. So it's a new shape, but parts of it will seem familiar if you break them down. Now to keep this simple, I'm going to talk about each section. Let's start with the side profile. High back, low front. A few reasons for this. Imagine you're picking something up off the pad. Your hand will naturally arch at the knuckles. So I wanted a mouse that was basically in this shape, keeping it natural. Also I found I aimed better with mice that had low button height, so I set them as low as possible. Then there's a gradual slope up to the top, so it shouldn't interfere with your grip. Whether you claw, palm or fingertip, it should feel smooth. Again, allowing your hand to find its natural position. Flat mice can be nice too, but I tend to rest the back of my palm, right here on this section. So I wanted the high back on this one. While making this, I was constantly putting my hand on it to check which part needed changing. Whenever I felt a bump or a sharp edge, I smoothed it over to the point I couldn't feel it. That's why it's such a rounded design, especially on the back. The mouse isn't designed for looks, it's designed for aim and comfort. Mostly aim though. I wanted a mouse that could help me aim at my best. And yes, this is the mouse I aim best with so far. I'm hoping the same is true for you, but we'll get to that soon. Now you notice how quickly it drops off at the back. This is because once I changed to fingertip grip, I realized I could micro adjust my aim more. Not having a long back means it won't hit the back of the palm. Even with your palm resting on it, it just slides back nicely. Next, if we put our fingers together and look at the shape of the gap in the palm, it looks curved, right? I think that's why a lot of mice have a back that's curved. But we don't hold mice in this section, unless you're using 1-3-1 one, one grip, meaning three fingers on the top of the mouse, one on either side. But most people use 1-2-2 one, two, two grip. So one on side, two on top, two on other side. And if you look at the shape of your hand when holding that, the contact points are under your index and middle fingers. And that area is very slightly curved. It's more like a flat area. So while a lot of mouse designers have thought they should add bigger curves on top, I believe it's better to flatten it. That's why when looking from the back, this mouse is pretty flat. There is minor curvature there so you don't feel it pushing up into your hand, but it still offers you support. Then we have the comfort grooves in the buttons. Some people say that isn't a safe shape because it forces your fingers into position, and that's true. But I coined the term safe shape just to discourage companies who are making really outrageous designs, where they really forced our fingers into one grip and that was it. However, if you go too safe, the mouse will be uncomfortable. It's about balance. And while you can hold mice however you like, I believe our fingers should be either side of the wheel. And if held that way, the comfort groove should feel like a really good balance. Not too deep, not too shallow. They also create the rails on the sides, which is where the mouse got its name from. It's my rail idea, so size rail. I just thought it looked really cool, and it felt good too, so I went with it. This is why I want to mention that because I designed this mouse in clay, it's not symmetrical. Even if it looks like it, it isn't. In fact, if we look at the base, it's obvious the sides are different. They started out as mostly flat, but then I just added some curvature for comfort. The thumb area has more curvature. I won't go into too much detail here, because it's the same principle I always mention. You start with a thinner base to a thicker top to assist with grip, and then you just add some minor curvature for comfort. One thing I will say is I asked him to remove the holes where I grip the mouse, but since using this mouse for a few months now, I actually find some days in some games, I use the holes around those areas for extra grip. So if you find your fingers wandering all over the mouse, that's okay. Just keep adjusting your grip until you forget you're using a new mouse. As said, this is a mouse designed for aim. That means it's based on testing over 150 mice. My hand has adapted to all of them. And even with all that experience, my hand still had to adapt to this mouse. And I designed it. So give it time, if you think it could work for you someday, then I encourage you to stick with it. It took me three weeks to get used to one mouse back in the day. This stuff isn't overnight, I think some people rush it too much. I've been having this conversation lately. You really do need to give these mice time. And that goes for all mice, not just mine. 
and that's what I try to base my reviews on. What mouse is going to help you aim best once you get used to it? Still, I don't want you looking at this mouse like it's perfect. It's a new step in the evolution of mice. This is a new journey. I could just make a mouse that's like all the others, but I'd rather push the boundaries, so I can test theories to help us get to that next level. And I'm very happy with this step. Hopefully you'll see why soon. Now, side buttons, I hold the mouse here, and I figure you should be able to use mouse 4 with your thumb joint here, and mouse 5 with your thumb tip. But it is a small mouse, it's only about 3.65 centimeters high, so I wanted to keep the buttons fairly small. I haven't had any issues using them, so I think they're all good. Speaking of buttons, we're using the KLGM 8.0 switches. There are some reasons for that, but basically they get a lot of praise, and I'm really liking them, so I wanted to try them in mine. This is still just a pre-production model, quality should be better on the official release. But here's an idea of what each sound like. For me, they almost feel like a scissor switch. Really satisfying click. Also, the wheels extra if I use have always been my favourite. They're quiet and have nice tactile steps. Perfect balance in my opinion. The DPI switch is underneath, and these are the steps. And sorry, but no extra fire software yet, so you won't be able to set your custom DPI range, but one day they will. A quick look at the RGB, you can turn the lights off and go through the effects. I find the plain colors are pretty boring, but I asked them if we can add these gradients. I think they look pretty cool, so that's a nice little bonus. I don't think I can show you the other brands in this video, but here it is next to the other extra fire mice, and yes, it's the smallest. Speaking of size, the grip width is 5.25 centimeters, length is 11.1, and some people have said it's a fingertip grip mouse, and yes, it can be, but it can also suit claw and palm. And who is it for? I would say palm grip up to 18.5 centimeters, and claw and fingertip grip between 17 and 19.5 centimeters. The dimensions are a bit deceiving because of the design. Hands that are bigger than you'd probably expect should be able to use this one pretty well. Then again, that's from someone who has become used to using smaller mice. Remember, it'll take time to adjust. I've been learning League of Legends lately, so just playing bots, and this mouse has been really good in that. Also great in Quake as well, of course, but I can recommend it for MOBA and FPS. And on the base, you can put the extra mouse gate around the sensor. That should be in the box. I personally didn't notice a difference. You can also set the debounce between 2 and 12 milliseconds by holding the 4 main buttons for 3 seconds, and a few other things so check the quick start guide for how to set up the mouse. As for pre-ordering, it depends where you live. It should be open on the 30th of March, otherwise check with your retailers. Like in Australia, mwave.com.au will have pre-orders open a day or two later, possibly after. It depends on when distribution gives them the go-ahead. I'll try to keep you posted through Twitter. Anyway, it's a new small lightweight mouse to contend with the other top mice but so there's no bias, I'll put my mice above the other list. So they'll be there, but not actually on there. I am kind of a perfectionist, so I'm already thinking of ways I can make this better, but it's been great. It's not for everyone, but if it suits your hand size and grip style, then I hope you like it. Remember to check your local stores for pre-ordering options, and the Extrify website. And I'll have a mousepad coming as well, stay tuned for that. Big thanks to Extrify for giving me the opportunity to design a mouse, and to everyone who has supported me over the years. It's a dream and I can't wait to design even more mice. As always, subscribe for updates, like and share this video, and I'll catch you in the next.